Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today, Create Stunning Intranets Using ShortPoint. Uh, my name is Joe Dormer. I'm a senior ShortPoint consultant here at ShortPoint. Um, I work with a lot of our customers as they're going through trials of ShortPoint uh, and help people as they start to build out their intranets with training and onboarding uh, to ShortPoint as well. Uh, today, we're going to be doing one of the first in a series of webinars here. We're going to be talking about um, how you can use ShortPoint to design an intranet site. We're specifically going to be looking at a uh, modern site today, uh, but everything you're going to see is also going to be applicable for um, classic SharePoint sites or SharePoint on-premises and SharePoint online environments. Um, this webinar is going to focus on really an introduction to ShortPoint, so it's going to be good for uh, folks who either are just starting to work with ShortPoint or maybe haven't even used it at all and they want to just learn a little bit more about what ShortPoint is. Um, so with that, we're going to do just a couple quick slides here. I'm going to try to keep it mostly uh, into our demos, but a couple quick slides to, to kind of help understand what ShortPoint is before we even get into the demo. Um, ShortPoint's an add-in that you're going to add into your SharePoint environment that's going to give us a lot more design flexibility uh, to be able to create really engaging, nice-looking intranets without having to do any custom development or coding in your site, okay? There's a couple, two components to ShortPoint uh, that are, are the main pieces we're going to look at today. Uh, there's the ShortPoint page builder. The ShortPoint page builder, as it sounds like, is the part of ShortPoint that we're going to use to actually build individual pages. So we've got uh, over 60 different design elements. These are things like slideshows, tiles, um, an events element, and they're the different design elements that we're actually going to add to our pages and build out each page. Um, the other component is what we call the theme builder, and the theme builder is what we're going to use to set things like colors and fonts and other branding components that we want to apply to the entire site. So not just one page, but our whole site and all the pages that are in it. We usually want those pages to all have a consistent look and feel, consistent colors and, and themes. So we'll use the theme builder uh, to apply that theme. So now if you hear me say page builder and theme builder as we go through this, hopefully those uh, terms will make sense. Um, of course, ShortPoint is going to create responsive intranets. So everything we create today is going to look great, whether you're using a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile device, okay? And with that, I said I'd keep it short on the slides. Let's jump right into a demo here, okay? So this is a modern communication site that we're gonna be working with today. Like I mentioned, ShortPoint is gonna work on both classic and modern sites. So everything you see is I'm adding different elements to this page. If you're using classic sites, or again, an on-premises version of SharePoint, that's all going to apply for you as well, okay? So to access the page builder, as I mentioned, ShortPoint's an add-in, so we added ShortPoint to our site. To begin designing this page, we're going to click our edit button, just like we normally would to go in and edit this page. Now, a couple quick notes on sections and layouts. ShortPoint's going to give us some more flexibility to design the layout uh, for this page. So before I start with ShortPoint, I want to talk a little bit about some of the options that are available from Microsoft here. So these are the sections that are available in the out-of-the-box modern templates, modern communication pages. We've got our two columns, three columns. You can split it one-third left or one-third right, and then we also have a full width option. Now, right now, this column that's on my page is actually a one-column layout. You'll notice what that does is it actually leaves some white space along the edges here. A lot of the clients that we work with, they want to utilize the full section of the page. Now we can add a full width column, and that's what we're going to do to start. We're going to use short point inside of a full width column. So let's add this. Now you'll notice though, there's really no way using the out of the box options here. We've got a couple different web parts from SharePoint, but we can't further split this up. We really only have then one column and all of our content would go across it. 
What we're going to do to help us use the full width of the page, but still manage the layouts, that's the first thing we're going to do with short point today. So you'll notice that there is the short point web part. It's the short point page builder web part that we have available on this site. I'm going to open that up. And as we go through here, um, when we open this, it's first going to give us a little bit of a placeholder. So I'm going to actually remove first this info. We don't need this button here. Inside of this page builder, it gives us a section and row here. And those are going to be the elements that we use to configure this layout. So again, we've got the nice full width. But what I want to do is actually divide this into some smaller uh, sections. So if I click on the row show layouts button here, we'll see then that we have a lot more options that we can use to split this into multiple columns. If we want to change it to example, uh, for example, to a two column layout, I can do that here. And I can even then adjust. There's these little buttons here to increase the layout width, make it smaller. And so I can control not only how many columns I have, but I can then adjust the width of those columns. Okay. Then once we've got our layout inside of this row, I want to add some content inside of this column. This blue insert short point button is how we're going to go in and we're going to be able to uh, access all of the different design elements that are available for us here on this page. Okay. We can look by category at the top so we can view all of these design elements or I can view specific categories of design elements here. So for example, we could look at some layout options. We have accordion, so I can have expanding and collapsing content on my site. Maybe I want to organize, organize the content here with some tabs. I can use the tabs element to create tabs layout on this site. We can add different types of media elements. So things like image carousels, slideshows, videos, and so on different types of lists here. So for example, a file list, as it sounds, is, is specifically designed for showing documents on our site. So it has some specific configuration options that are going to be useful uh, for showing documents. And again, each element here has slightly different options in the settings. We'll look at a couple as we go so you can see what some of those options look like. Uh, but they're all going to be designed to show element or show content in a slightly different way on this page. Okay. So to start with, let's go and add something simple to this site. So let's say that we're creating a home page here and I want to create some tiles that link out to some department pages or department sites that we've created. So I'm going to search and we can search for elements up here. We'll pick our tiles element. To open this, we're just going to click on the tiles element here. That's then going to open up the configuration options for this tiles element. Okay. To start with, we've got some settings we can control, settings around the look and feel and styling of this element. So I can change the size of these tiles. Uh, we can make them small, medium, large, huge. We can change the color. Now this is actually where it, it's going to be helpful to think about the theme builder that I talked about earlier as well. When we see in this drop down for the colors, we've got the primary, primary dark, light, secondary, these colors are actually coming from a color palette or color theme that's on our site. And so using the theme builder, what we'll do a little bit later on in the webinar today is we'll actually go to the theme builder and we'll update what is our primary color, what is our secondary color, so that again, all of the pages we're creating are going to have these, our brand colors easily accessible in this drop down here. You can. If you want to, you can put in a hex code directly in here if you want, you know, for a one off color to use a, a specific color on just these tiles. But if you're going to be reusing the same colors over and over, what we usually recommend is let's make those part of our color palette so that they're right in this drop down. And then if we ever change our branding or color scheme down the road, we can change that color palette in one place and we don't have to go in to every single element where we've put in that hex code to update the color. Okay, so again, we'll touch on, on where we can update that in a little bit when we look at the theme builder. Okay, 
There's some other options here. Again, these are where it's kind of specific options for the tiles here. So we've got some text alignment, a couple different shapes here, a couple different styles. Again, I'm not going to go through every single one, but you get the idea. We've got some different settings there. And again, you'll have other options depending on the element that we're working on. Okay. The next tab over here is the tiles or items tab. Okay. And so this is where we're going to actually create the tiles that we want to display on this page. So again, for my use case, I was going to create a couple tiles to link out to uh, some department sites. So we'll create an IT tile. I can give it a description here. We'll put in a link. This link in our case is going to be to um, you know, another SharePoint site. But of course, if, if your use case is different, maybe you have an HR site and then you want to link out to some other external resources like your HR uh, or benefits platform. You could put in any URL here is going to be accepted in this link field. Okay. We also can control how this link is going to open. So if I want it to open, uh, maybe in a new window here, uh, we can give this tile an icon. So for the IT group, we'll do a desktop icon. Okay. Uh, I could also, if I wanted to have an image background, we could put an image background on this. I can update the color for this particular tile and so on. Okay. Let's add one more. We'll click our plus button, add new tile, and we'll add another one just so we've got a couple in our example here. So let's do for this next one, we'll create an HR tile as well. And then for this icon, we'll do this user's icon, some little people here, okay? And as we're working on these tiles, if we want to see what they're going to look like, we can always preview the element that we're working on. So let's take a look and see what those tiles look like, okay? So here they are. We've got this slide up effect when we hover over. And those are just a couple basic tiles. I'll show you some more creative examples in just a few minutes here. But that's the basics of how we're going to go in and actually add these tiles or items to our page. Okay. Now, the next tab is, is a really important one, and we're going to get into this in a lot more detail a little bit later on. This connect tab is going to let us connect to the lists and libraries and actually other content as well. So we can connect to things like people in our, our organization and show information from people's profiles based on uh, a SharePoint group that they're in. Um, we can connect to an RSS feed and pull in external news. You can do a lot with these connections. It's going to allow this information on our page to be uh, more dynamic. Uh, rather than just coming in one by one and adding them to the page directly, we'll be able to connect to a source. And as that information is updated in the source, it'll pull through to the page based on the connection we've created. Um, I don't have one that I'm going to show for the tiles here, but as we build out our page a little bit more, we'll show you how this connection works. The next tab that we have here is the visibility tab. This is going to let us control who can see the particular short point element that we're working on here. So in SharePoint, of course, you have permissions management. And that's really the main layer, uh, main control that we're going to use to set permissions and control access and, and who can see the content on these pages. Most of the time in SharePoint, we want to keep permissions as simple as possible. So if we can give permissions at the site level, you know, that's great, or minimum the page level. There are certain times, though, where you want everyone to be able to go to a particular page, but you might want, for example, these tiles to only be visible for a certain group. So that's the use case, kind of in addition to the SharePoint permissions, we can set uh, a visibility control here to make this short point element visible for a certain group or do not show it for a certain group. Now, even beyond that, again, this visibility here is going to be for the whole tile. So all of the tiles would either be visible or not. We actually do have, if we jump back to the tiles tab for just a minute, you can on each individual tile. So here I'm on the HR tile we created. I can actually enable visibility settings for just that tile. So then we could control, we could have a set of 10 tiles and maybe only five are visible for the executive group or 
whatever group it is that we want to uh, show some additional tiles to. Okay. The advanced tab that we have here, this is going to give us even more settings around the look and feel and styling of these tiles. So for tiles, we have things like icon color, spacing between the tiles, uh, a couple different layouts, text color and size, custom height and width. So if you recall on the settings tab, we can set it to small, medium, large, huge, but maybe you have some specific requirements that you want to use and, and create tiles that are an exact size. Well, we can come to the advanced tab and set a height and width by a pixel or by percentage here uh, to get the tiles to fit exactly the way that we want them to on this page. Okay. Now, finally, there also is a custom CSS tab. So the goal of SharePoint, of course, is to try to limit the, the customization that you need to do with CSS or any kind of uh, coding or programming. But we do have some clients that we work with who like the added flexibility and want to uh, take things even a little bit further. And so they'll come in here and be able to apply their own styles to this element. Okay. So that's the basics of how we're going to configure any one of these design elements. Like I said, some of the specific options are going to vary between elements, but they're all going to have a similar layout in terms of the tabs across the top and the types of options we're going to see on those. Okay. Now, if you're just getting started with SharePoint or maybe you're going to go and do a trial after this, as you're getting started and learning about these elements, I want to point out there is a button in the corner here, a demo button that's going to take you to the demo page for that element. So if we click on this button, this is going to take us over to uh, the SharePoint demos website, demos.shortpoint.com, and it's going to take us specifically in this case to the tiles page since we're working on uh, the tiles element. So everything on this page, these are some more creative examples than just my blue background with the icon. You can see these are all created using that same tiles element just by changing the different configuration options that we have. Okay. And as we scroll over these, you see some of these. This one has the same slide up effect we saw in my tiles. The ones below are, are circle tiles here, and they've got a flip effect. As we go down, we've got some pictures that flip to show a name and title to show our team. Here, we're using a number of different settings. We're changing the sizes of these tiles. Uh, we've got over here a background image with an icon, and it's got a color over top of it to give it this kind of tinted effect here. Okay. So again, everything here is created with the tiles. There's also this tiles options demos. So again, there were kind of a lot of different configuration drop downs you can pick from. If you come to this options demos area, you're going to see what each of those configuration options does. So some of them are a little bit more self-explanatory than others with icons, makes sense, colors, background image. Um, but maybe something like our spacing down here, maybe it's easier to come here and see it on this demo page rather than trial and error uh, on your own on your own site. Okay. A couple different styles. You can see this is our style Sarah. It's got the slide in effect. Again, just a great way to come in and get a feel for what's possible, what those different options are. Now, you come to our demo site, you might say, okay, Joe, you know, example one looks great, but I still don't know what settings I need to, to use to create that. How do I get that on my site? Well, we've made it really easy. This demo site is kind of a toolkit for you. So what we can actually do is come up to the top. We'll click on the allow to copy parts. Once we've turned that on, as I hover over any of these examples, we get this copy button. Okay. So all I need to do if I want to use this on my site is simply copy it. We'll go back to our site here. This is the, the tiles element that we were adding to our page manually just a minute ago. I'm going to finish adding this to my page by clicking the insert button here. And so you can see it shows up inside of that column, in this wireframe format here. I'm going to go over to the other column and now just right click and paste. And that's then going to paste in the tiles that we copied from the demo site. I can, of course, then update these, right? I want to open the settings. 
excuse me, open the settings here. And then we'll be able to see all of the settings that were applied. I can, of course, change those. Maybe I want to make the tiles smaller, bigger, um, change a shape, and so on. I can come to the tiles themselves. And I didn't want here to create a database tile. I wanted IT, so I'll put in, you know, the IT title. We'll update the link. And then we'll come in here to our icon and maybe put back our desktop icon. Now, when we preview this, you'll see that these tiles look exactly the same as they did on the demo site, but now they're in our environment, and we can, of course, customize them again as much as we need to here. Let's update that. Okay. All right. Now, going back to the demo site for just a minute. Here, from the basics over to the right in the navigation, these are all of the same design elements that we saw when we click the blue insert short point button um, and we saw all the different options there. The same categories are these headings and there's a page just like this tiles page for every single element uh, that we have. If you want to see what a full page looks like built with short point, that's where the demos and all of these intranet collections okay, and all of these use cases these are all going to be full page layouts using many different design elements, okay? I like to actually go click on the home button here. That's going to take us over to our home page. And on the home page, there are going to be thumbnails or previews uh, of all of these different design elements, or excuse me, of all the different templates we were just looking at. Uh, so you can come in here and see again what's possible using these elements. What types of pages can I create? So again, all of these are created using short point. You can see I'm just at the top. There's a lot more that we can scroll down through. We'll kind of stick to the top here for the demo. Um, what we can do then is go into any one of these templates that we have on our site, and you can either copy pieces of them, just like we copied the tiles. We can take bits and pieces from different templates that we like. So I can turn on that allow to copy parts option. Or I can copy the entire page if I want to. So we'll come over here. And at the top, I'll say, let's copy this whole page. This is a good starting point for my internet. Let's copy this whole page. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, there's just a little trick here. My cursor is not going to go right in over the top. So I just want to show you this other actions button, which is a nice handy feature. We can copy this entire section. I can preview this whole section. Or there's some controls around spacing here. So I can add some space before. In this case, I just want to give myself a little bit of room above that section we already created. And above that, I'm then going to paste again. That's going to paste in the entire page that we just copied from the demo set. Okay. So it copies over all of these sections and all of the elements that created that page. Let's just quickly save this as a draft here so you can see uh, what that's going to look like and see how it copied over literally everything that's on that demo site. Okay, so it's taking just a minute to, to save all of our changes there. While that's going, I just want to go back to the demo site really quick and point out a couple of the colors here. So you'll notice just kind of this lighter blue color and these kind of pastel colors on the demo site here. If we go back to our communication uh, site that we have here, we're going to see that the colors are actually using the short point theme. Or I'm sorry, they're using the theme that's on our, uh, our communication site here, right? So now those colors match the theme, the color palette that we saw when we looked at the drop down. We saw the primary, secondary, et cetera. They're using our color theme. Okay, so anytime you copy over any example from the demo site, it's going to pick up on the theme that's applied on your site. So let's go back in now that we've copied this over. Let's make some changes here. So I'm going to edit our page again. And once we go into our edit mode, we're going to edit the short point web part first, because remember we added the short point web part to get to the page builder. So the first step we're going to do here is to then edit that web part. That's going to open up 
the short point editor once again. And then we can go in and make modifications to the page. So let's take a look at kind of how that page is built a little bit. We've got our welcome to our intranet. That's our, our section at the top. This banner here, we've got some tiles below that. Here's our tiles, okay. Let's go in and just maybe make a couple changes to the section so I can open up these section settings. We have different uh, layout options here. So there's things like full and standard. The full layout is gonna make this content go all the way to the next section, or we can use the standard layout and have a little buffer between those sections. Change the horizontal and vertical alignment of the of the content inside of there. We can control the height of this section. That's what's setting the height on that banner image that we have. So right now it's set to 550 pixels. Maybe I wanna adjust this. Let's set it to one third of our screen height here, okay? Um, we can go over to the background. That's actually where this image is coming from. So if you wanted to update the background image and put in your own banner image, simply update that here. You can even do a background video if you want. Maybe you want to just set a color, control all of that from the settings option here. Okay. Now, I talked a little bit earlier about connecting to content. And so let's dive into that a little bit deeper here. What I want to do a bit further down on our page, we have this tickers element here. Okay, so let me just preview this for you so you can see what that looks like. It's got latest announcement, and then it's gonna scroll through some different announcements we wanna show on our page, okay? Right now, those announcements are added one by one in this ticker, but what I wanna do, I actually have an announcements list here, and I wanna show those announcements in my page. So I just wanna show a couple things on the announcements, and then we'll connect it and show them on our page. So I've got a really simple list here, just a title of our announcement. We've got a body for our announcement. And then I also have another field that I added. And of course, in SharePoint, we can add our own fields and, and information here. So I've added an office field. Maybe these announcements are targeted for specific offices. So, you know, Detroit, Chicago, San Francisco. And we can, if we want to, filter these, right? So just using the SharePoint experience here, we could filter and say, I wanna see only the Detroit announcements, and then we'll apply that, okay? So that then now is filtered to show us just those announcements for Detroit. Up here in SharePoint, this is where we manage the, what we call views in SharePoint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this view as Detroit. Well, we'll say Detroit announcements actually, we'll call it. Okay, and then let's save this. So now I have a couple of views in my drop down here. I can see either all items or I can view just my Detroit announcements. Okay. So now let's connect and actually show these announcements in our page. I'm going to go over to my ticker and let's open up the settings for this ticker again. And there's again some different options speed, color, size. We can adjust for the ticker. The items, just like we added the tiles directly into this element or into the tiles element earlier, uh, the, the items for this ticker are being added right here on the items tab. We can add more. But what we wanna do is connect to the announcements that we already had in our announcements list. So we'll connect, go to the connect tab. We'll choose our connection type. Well, where do we wanna connect? It, it's a list on our current site, so we'll first select current site. Then I'm gonna choose the list and library or list that I wanna to connect to. It's gonna show me all available list and libraries. I wanna to connect to the announcements. And then we also are going to connect to a particular view here, which is why I took a quick detour to talk a little bit about views there is we can connect to any view that we've created. So for example, if we wanted to, maybe we're creating a page for the Detroit office or the Detroit location, maybe we wanna filter this and only see those Detroit announcements on this page. In this case though, I am gonna leave it actually as our all items, okay? Items limit is gonna let us control how many announcements are gonna display in this ticker. Um, in our case, we've only got a few, so it's fine to see all of them, but of course over time as our announcements grow, 
50, 100 announcements. We don't want to see all of those in this page. So we're going to set this items limit to five. So those top five announcements in our, in our list and our view are going to show up through this ticker. And then let's connect. Okay. All right. So now we're connected to our announcements list. But let's go back to the list for a second because we can connect all kinds of different lists to that ticker element or to any other element. And you might have different fields here. You might not have just title and body and office. You might have your own other fields and properties columns on this list. Well, the short point elements then, we're not going to make an assumption or know which of these you actually wanna show through your page. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the short point element or we're going to configure in just a minute and tell the short point element, do we want to show the title? Do we want to show the body? Maybe we want to show the office somewhere. So what we'll do to configure that is I'm going to go back to the items. And before where we had all of the items listed out one by one here, now we just have this tab that says items mapping. Okay. So what I can do then is go to the title for my ticker and I can pull in here from this drop down, these are those columns or properties that we have on our list. And in fact, they're actually the columns that are visible in the view. And so in SharePoint, there's actually a lot of columns that get created. So for example, here we see created by and, and modified by. Well, there's actually also a created date and a modified date and many other properties that are available um, for these items. However, the ones that are going to show up in this drop down are only going to be the ones that we see in the view that we're connected to. So that's why we only see these five, plus we're always going to have the item URL. So if you ever are configuring a connection here and you don't see one of your columns that you know is on the list, make sure that it's in the view that you're connected to. Okay. In this case, we could pull in the title. And you know what? Maybe I actually want to do. I'm going to use a couple fields here. So I'm going to say, let's pull in the office. Let's try this again. We're going to do the office and then we'll do a dash. And then we'll pull in the title. Okay, so we'll show the office location and the title. We can kind of combine and create our own um, announcements using multiple of these properties as well. Then we'll also in the link field, put in the item URL so that someone is able to click on these announcements and see the rest of the details, the body of that announcement, who posted it and so on, okay. Now let's preview this and we'll see. Here's my Detroit, SharePoint internet launching soon, Chicago, new product release and our San Francisco webinar announcement, okay. And so again, those are pulling in the title and the office to create each ticker item dynamically. And of course, as you then are adding additional announcements to that list, those announcements are gonna be pulled into the page. So where a, a lot of our clients really like this is maybe in the past, they've been the sole administrator of a SharePoint page. And every time someone wants to post a new announcement on that page, they have to go to this person and ask, hey, can you post this announcement for me? Or, hey, can you update this event for me? Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to delegate some of that control by just giving people the permission to come into the list. They can post a new announcement. And then as they do that, it's going to be pulled into the page based on the connection that we've created there. So let's go ahead and update this. All right. And so we'll see when we've connected that it has a little connection icon here. So that's how we know it's connected to a list or a library or another source here, as opposed to the other items here, which are added directly to the element. We'll see those listed out here. Okay. So that's using a simple announcements, excuse me, announcements list to show into the ticker. All these elements are gonna work in a similar way. So for example, if we take the events down here, I can open up this events uh, element. And now of course I wanna connect this to a SharePoint calendar that I have. So I'm gonna come in here and go to the connect tab. We can choose again, our, I've got a calendar on this site. So we'll say current site, 
choose our lists in library. Here I'm going to pick my events list, and then I'm going to use this all events uh, all events view, and we'll do an items limit of five again. We'll connect this. We've now connected it to our calendar. And I'll just show you those events really quickly here. Okay, so here's our events. And then we'll do the exact same steps here on the items. We can pull in the title from our, our calendar event. We'll pull in a start date and an end date here. We'll map in the location. And we'll also map in this category field. Okay. And then now when we preview these, we'll see that those events again are going to get pulled in directly from that calendar. Okay. Let's update this one. And let's go ahead now and republish our page and actually save this so we can see all of the changes that we've made um, with our updated content and we you know reduce the size of that header at the top when we started or the section at the top. As we're going through this as well, if anyone does have questions, I'm going to try to get to some questions here at the end. Um, so there is a question area in the Zoom meeting here. If you'd like to ask some questions, again, I'll try to get to them as best I can at the end uh, with the time we have remaining here. Okay. All right, so now my page has been published. Again, we reduced our, our header here, and we've got our announcements coming in and our events coming in. So it's really as simple as that to copy a, a, a template or a design from the ShortPoint demo site and then go ahead and update the content uh, to pull from your sources, your information that you have in SharePoint. Okay. So now that we've built this page, Let's take a look at that theme builder. We want to update these colors, update the font, make a couple other changes here. So I'm going to go to our site content to do that. We added the short point app, so we'll see the short point app here in our site contents. To get to the theme builder, we're going to go to this short point dashboard. And then from the short point dashboard, this is where we manage our installations, we manage licensing. Um, here we also have the theme builder tile. So I'll click on the theme builder tile. The next one we're going to see here, it's going to ask me or confirm that I want to use the modern theme builder. So there are the page builder that we were looking at, those are going to be almost exactly the same between modern and classic, all the same elements available. The classic and modern theme builders are a little bit different. Um, so in this case, we're going to use the modern theme builder, but you could also use the classic theme builder if you had some classic pages you wanted to, to style with that theme builder as well. Right now, we'll go customize my site. And this is then going to... Uh, open up the theme builder. It's going to take us back to our home page where we'll have an additional menu here. Okay. So the theme builder is going to show up then on the left hand side here and we'll be able to make changes to this theme and see what those changes look like uh, essentially in real time here on our page as we make updates. So if we go into the general settings, first thing is the elements. Go into all sites. There's a couple different levels we can hide things at. So I can go into the all sites and we can hide and show different elements. So I could hide this whole header. And so that's going to then hide where our menu was. Our, our header is going to be hidden here. Okay. We could also hide just the menu, just the logo, those different pieces here. Uh, the focus mode is kind of a special one. So the focus mode is going to hide this Office 365 or SharePoint. Uh, banner across the top and also this action bar here. Now when we hide those, when we turn that on, as you can see they've now hidden, but the focus mode is kind of special because what it's actually going to do is give us a button in the corner to expand and collapse 
those bars. Because we, of course, still are going to need to get to our edit button here to you know, edit this page. Uh, maybe we want to get over to the app launcher so we can get over to other uh, Office 365 or you know, SharePoint, uh, other Office 365 apps here so we can go and still get to that menu if we need to. But again, by default, it would be collapsed here. Now, the other thing we can do, again, is this is right now for all sites. So this theme is being applied to this site collection and, and the sites within it. If I don't want this focus mode to be on all sites, I can turn it off here. So it's not going to be for all sites, but I could come back and I could say, you know what, just for my home page, when people come just to my home page, let's turn on that focus mode. So our other sites, that menu would always be there, but on the focus or on the home page, we would have that menu collapse. So you can control some different levels within this site where you're showing and hiding these different elements. Here's our color palette. Okay, so with the color palette, we can change that primary color that we were looking at earlier. So again, instead of going one by one and adding a hex code, I'm going to add my hex code for my color here. We're going to change this to this uh, lighter or kind of turquoise blue color here. And then everything that was using that primary color here is updated. Okay, I can then generate with the generate button, darker and lighter variations of that primary color. We can also then come back and set some other colors. So you've got your primary color and those variations, but you might also have some secondary brand colors that you want to upload here and you can uh, apply those there. What I can also do is I can save this color theme that I've created using the color theme tool. So I could save this. You can see I've got one as a webinar, but I can save a couple different themes that then will show up in the change the look options. If you look on the settings, we can look at that a little bit later if there's time, but you'll be able to easily then pick and choose between these color palettes uh, that you've created. Okay. All right. Fonts and typography here. So this is going to let us change the font that we want to use on our site. So we're going to come in here, change this base font. Maybe I want to update this to, we'll do our uh, Montserrat font here that we have. Um, the fonts that are in this dropdown, these are the ones that are going to be available by default. You can also bring in uh, your own custom fonts as well if there's a particular font that your brand team, your marketing team uh, wants to use here. But as we change that font, we see the text has been updated here in our all of our text on the page. Uh, footer. So we can add a footer to this page. Uh, I'm going to show you really quickly. I did kind of some steps earlier. There's a couple steps to this process. The first one is we're going to use, and you'll see here a little note about it. It's called the short point generator, but it's going to let us use all of the different page builder elements that we use to build our page to also create a footer. Once you've created and saved that footer, it'll show up in this drop down, and we can then apply that footer. And you'll see now I've just got kind of a small, simple footer down at the bottom that's then going to be applied to all of the pages in this site. Okay. Uh, mobile settings, there's a couple options here right now. And when we click on the mobile settings, we're going to see this uh, preview over in the mobile experience. So you can see these elements then are adjusting. They are responsive uh, to fit then on our mobile device here. Uh, we can adjust those mobile elements as well. So it's the same elements we were looking at before. Turn focus mode on and off, hide the header, show the header uh, as you need here. Okay. If you're noticing as we're going through this, some of these options are grayed out. Those are options that are coming soon for the modern theme builder. They're available today for the classic theme builder. And we'll have in the next few months here, a lot of these options available also for the modern theme builder to give you even more flexibility over the header and menu and fonts of different types throughout this page. Okay. Under the utilities, we can apply custom CSS to this entire uh, to this entire site here. So if I want to apply some CSS that's going to target my header and have that be consistent on all of these pages, we can apply that CSS here. 
the import and export option, this is going to let me copy this entire theme. So these themes, again, are going to be scoped to the site collection. So if you have a number of site collections that you want to be able to have the same theme, rather than going in and toggling on and off these settings and applying all the colors one by one, we can simply come here, copy this whole theme, and then go paste it to our other site collection to import that theme there. And then here's the custom fonts. As I mentioned, bring in your own custom font if we don't have the one you're looking for in our drop down out of the box okay i'm going to come back in i do want to let me just make sure i want to make sure that actually that my header is turned back on here and then let's publish this okay so as we're working in the theme builder these changes are just going to be visible to me as the designer with the colors and showing and hiding that's all going to be visible just to me as the designer once we've published this everyone who comes to our site then we'll see the changes that we've applied, uh, all the updated colors that we have, okay? All right, so now we're being taken back to our home page here where we're gonna see our new site. It's got all of our page content, and then of course now it's using our, our theme that we've applied here, okay? There we go. We've got a few minutes left, so I'm actually gonna jump into one more topic here before we go into the questions and answers. And that topic is about news. Um, with these modern SharePoint sites, there's the ability to create news pages. And one of the most common questions I get asked when I'm meeting with people is how do I show that news on my site? So we're gonna take a look here at how that would work. So first of all, let me explain what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar with the news posts in these modern sites, if we go to the new button here, you'll see there's new news posts and news links, okay? News post is gonna create a new page in SharePoint. You can also bring in a link from another news site and paste that link in here and have it be posted as news in your site. For now, we're gonna do this new news post and create a really quick example of, of what these news posts look like. Okay, so we'll click new news post there. That's gonna create actually a new uh, page for us. Got a couple different templates here. I'm gonna create just a blank news post to start with. And I'm gonna give this a name. So we'll just call this sample news post. And here I can also set um, an image for this banner area across the top. We'll just do this little coffee stock image here, adjust where we want that. And you'll notice that this again is just, it's just a standard SharePoint page. So you can, if you want to, even within these news pages, add short point elements. We're gonna keep this really simple and just put in some text here. Here's a sample news post, okay. And when we're done with this, let's post our news. Okay. So now, what if we wanna show that news post and have those news posts update on this page? Let's first look at where the news post is and we're gonna talk a little bit more about, again, the views and, and what information we have and what we're gonna to connect to. So those news pages, when we create them or those news posts are created in our pages, our site pages library here. So here's my sample news post that I just created, okay? I'm gonna change over to our all pages view. And what we'll see, I'm actually gonna change it over to, th th this'll be fine, we'll do this all pages view here. What you can see here is that we've got a smaller set because I've actually already adjusted this view. And what I did is I added some other columns here. We've got this banner image URL, we've got a description, this promoted state column, and the title, okay? The promoted state column here is really important for the news. This actually is how we know that these are news posts and not just a regular page. So this right now is filtered to show only those news posts However, our other pages that we saw, for example, if we went over to our by author, there's many other pages. 
the pages that we're seeing here on this all pages have been filtered to only see those that have that promoted state value of two, that tells us that this is a news post, okay? So now what I can do, same kind of steps that we took earlier, if we go back to our home page, we'll come back here, we'll edit this page, and we'll just connect one of our elements to that site pages library into the view that we created there to filter and show our news. So what I'm gonna do again is edit this page and then we'll open up the short point web part. And I'm actually gonna replace where it says documents on our site. We'll add our news there instead of documents. So here's our editor. And then here again, it says documents right now. I'm gonna change this to say news. We'll update that. And since we had a blue background there, I'm just gonna make sure that this text stays white so we can see it nice and clear when we actually publish this. Let's get rid of our icon list. I wanna use a different element here, so I'm not gonna use the icon list. I'm gonna to come to our insert short point button. And for this one, I wanna use a image list. So it's gonna have a little image and a title and description. So we'll add our image list here. And then from the image list, we're going to connect to the site pages and to the view that we just created here. So we'll go to our connect option, connect to our current site, connect to the site pages. And I actually have a news view that's filtered to just show those news items. And again, we can save five items and then we'll connect. Once we're connected again, two-step process, we'll connect, and then we'll go to the items to actually map the properties from the site pages libraries that they're showing up in the correct fields for our image list. So we'll pull in here to the title, we'll pull in our title field, We'll pull in for the subtitle, maybe I want to say author, and then we'll pull in the created by author. We'll show the description in the description field. The image, we're going to map to our banner image URL. The link, we're going to link to the document preview. That's going to open up this page in our browser when we click on these items. Okay. And if we preview this now, we'll see that those items are gonna get pulled in from our site pages. And as we keep talking about, as people post new news posts, they'll show up on this page, okay? What I also wanna do is I know that this section actually has a blue background. And so I'm gonna go over to our advanced tab. And on the advanced tab, I wanna change my title color to white. We're gonna change all of our text to white. We'll do our subtitle too, and our description to white. And then let's insert this. And then once more, we'll save our page here, finish all of our changes. Hanging on me just a minute here. Just finish saving. And so again, here now we can see our news posts getting pulled into this page here, okay? So that's the basics of how we're gonna create this SharePoint site um, using the page builder and the theme builder. That's gonna cover everything that we wanted to go over here today in our demo. Um, I'm gonna pull back up my contact information here in case anyone has any other questions uh, after the webinar. You can certainly reach out to me directly. Um, and I would recommend also, if you haven't used SharePoint before, you can go to our website at shortpoint.com and register for a 15-day trial and, and give it a try for yourself as well. 
the webinar will get posted to YouTube also after this, and we'll post the questions there as well. Uh, so again, if you want to watch this later, if you missed part of it, you can catch us on YouTube again. Um, so again, thanks everyone for joining. And if you do have some questions here, send them over in the chat and we'll answer the questions for the last five or so minutes that we've got. All right, so someone is asking about the licensing a little bit here, the licensing um, being yearly and what that means. So ShortPoint is an annual license. What that means is that uh, you get the license for one year. During that time, you can create as many sites and pages as you'd like within your environment. Um, after the one year, if you choose not to renew for some reason, everything you've already created will actually continue to stay uh, visible on your page. You're not going to lose any of that work. You just can't at that point continue to use the software to continue to make changes um, and make new sites and pages at that point. Uh, but everything you've created, including the connections, if you've connected to a calendar announcements, as new information is posted in your site, that'll still get pulled through to the page. Okay. All right, someone asking about um, Power BI and trying to show Power BI on their site. We do have, that was one of the elements that we actually have, just to quickly show that one. Um, I'm going to pull back up our demo site here, actually. And you can see there is a Power BI element that we can use, okay? So that Power BI element is gonna let you connect to all of your data in Power BI. You can display different reports, dashboards, anything that you've created in Power BI, display that directly inside of a page you're creating using ShortPoint, okay? Um, how often is ShortPoint updated? We're releasing a new major version every few months typically so adding all kinds of new features different design elements improvements things like adding to the theme builder for modern sites are going to be some of the things we're working on in the next uh, couple months here but again every few months we've got a major update that's got some new features and of course all those updates are included when you have a short point license uh, what type of support do we offer uh, short point and during a trial, if you do a trial with us, we meet with you and kind of help you get started, um, answer any questions, talk about your specific use cases and help you build a couple pages. If you decide to move forward and purchase a license, after that we do offer a training session as well. Uh, so again, we'll meet with you and help answer some more questions that you have, make sure everything is clear on how to use the tool um, in the use cases specific for your organization. Um, beyond that, we do offer support through our website, and I'll point out here in the support area, uh, there's a great knowledge base that has hundreds of articles about common questions that we get asked, things around installation, you see at the top here some getting started exercises, knowledge base has a lot of great information. Um, you also can submit support tickets, so we manage it through a support ticketing process, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can, usually, um, always within 24 hours, um, but usually quicker. And we'll respond either with a quick answer over an email, uh, or if we need to arrange a meeting, we can always do that and have a screen share and, and help you out with the issue uh, if it's required as well. Okay. Uh, let's see, other questions coming in here. Asking about a hub site, that's, that's an interesting and good question. So what happens if I publish a theme to my hub site? Does that whole theme get applied to all the sites that are associated with that hub site? So the theme, as I talked about, is going to be for the specific site collection. So all of the short point theme is not going to be applied uh, directly through the hub association. The color palette, however, since that color palette is part of the, the native Microsoft functionality that is inherited by the hub sites, that color palette will be inherited uh, to your associated hub sites, okay? And I think we're coming up right on the end of the hour. We've got a couple more questions, but again, I'll take those offline. Um, thanks again, everyone, for attending the webinar, and uh, have a great day.